So it's approaching the end of the summer in Finland. Temperatures are starting to drop. It's about 14 degrees during the day and it's dropping to as low as about 4 degrees at night. Uh, I really need to sort out a secondary antenna. Um, I've got still got some QRM from the neighbours on one side. So I'm, I need to sort out, fix my secondary antenna, which uh, for the summer I converted into a, a 6 and 4 metre dipole which is just above me here, hanging, the wires dropping because it's old. <laughs> um, but I, I need to get a ideally 40 metre and 20 metre antenna for the winter. I'm currently struggling, however, as where I normally tie the end of the, the 20 metre dipole legs, there's currently a wasp nest. I'll see if I can swap the camera. So this is where I normally tie off the leg of the dipole. They're not too active at the moment, I think because the temperature's dropping, but there's enough going in and out for me to be hesitant about getting up on a ladder and to start harassing the poor waspies while I try and fix the, the antenna. So my current idea is rather than have a, a full length 20 meter dipole, I'll try and shorten it so it fits on the outer side of the, the wooden structure there. And if I can make it a permanent, well not a permanent structure, but rather than just wire, if I can give it a, a wooden support, it will also give me the possibility to, to move it and maybe try it as a vertical antenna. I did have a support down here, but I pulled it out as I figured I wasn't going to use it. I was planning a, a multi-band HF vertical, but my plans kind of changed. <coughs> Excuse me. But I'm now thinking maybe I'll put that back in and maybe experiment a bit more before the, the winter kicks in. So this is a very quick suck it and see video, as in I'm not measuring anything. I haven't calculated how many, how much inductance I need uh, for the loading coils. I will just approximate what I think is right in my head and then adjust the lengths or adjust the coils if I have to uh, to try and compensate so I'll see how quick I can do this. So I'm in the shed I'm looking for wooden supports something that will last the winter but not something that I'm going to need to use for skirting boards or something else in the house. Um, I'm going to have a dig through this pile and see what I can find. Ideally, I either need just short sections to construct some loading coils or <clears throat> ideally uh, a long length, a long pole or something that I can use to construct the entire dipole on. So back in two minutes. Now I couldn't find any wood, but I have found a plastic pipe which is just under two and a half meters in length. It looks the ideal size for a lightweight 20 meter shortened dipole. It's a little bit flexible, but I'm, I'm thinking it, it's self-supporting at least. It is self-supporting, so maybe this would be good because I don't have to drill it. I can wind the inductors directly on it as I drop it. I can cable tie them. In some ways it's easier to adjust because if I'm drilling some pieces of wood or other sections of PVC pipe once I've drilled the holes it's kind of fixed in length. If I need to add more turns then I'm kind of limited by the the physical length of the section I cut. Whereas this I'm going to give this a go. Yeah, I think this is a a good plan. I'll move it out. I'll check it on the, the, the wooden um, decking area and just check it for size. But apart from that, I think we're good to go. Let's see how quick I can do this. So this size is really perfect. It's a bit smaller than I intended, so it'll be a bit less efficient. Uh, but it's just such a convenient size. I can support it across this wooden structure. I can possibly put it vertical somewhere else or hang it. Yeah, lots of options. 
and the fact it's not wood means it won't absorb water so it will be a bit more reliable in terms of drifting tuning during the winter months and it'll be easier to construct because there's no drilling no sawing it's just a case of of wrapping the wire on it checking for the tuning and and then shoving it up in the air so i will be testing it without a ballon because the ballon is currently here and it's all the coax feed is currently waterproofed i don't want to remove all that and have to redo it so i'll tune it up without a ballon and then hopefully it will stay fairly accurate when i put it on the proper setup down here i'm looking forward to this i haven't done any radio things for some time so yeah it's good to be good to be doing something practical again even if i'm getting attacked by wasps while i stand here so what i found here is my original 20 meter element so rather than cut up some fresh wire i know that it certainly won't be any longer than than this so i'm going to plan to use this to construct the new the new shortened antenna whether there'll be enough length to construct the inductors as well i i don't know but this actually leads me to a an interesting story. So yeah, when, or well, many, many years ago, back when I was probably about 20 years old and I was still playing around with CB, uh, I didn't really know much theory, antenna theory, radio theory. I was just an enthusiastic CB operator and I needed to construct an antenna that would fit in a, a small apartment. And I knew the I knew how to construct a, a half wave dipole. I needed to construct something for the ten or eleven meter band, well, eleven meter band. And I thought, well, if I have this much wire and I need to fit it in a dipole that's half the size of a normal dipole, I'll just get the wire and wrap it around an inductor, same amount of wire, but then it will be shorter in length. So I went with like a typical CB whip antenna where it's base loaded, probably very lossy in hindsight, and then the rest of the wire to the length of the, the space I had available. And I put an SWR meter on this and it was an almost perfect match. Now I, I don't know whether this was just coincidence that the, the length of the inductor and the width of the inductor and the, the width of the wire that I was using just happened to make it a perfect match for that band or whether the amount of wire I used made the inductor so lossy that it appeared a good match. But either way, it worked really well. And from a small apartment to ground floor apartment, sorry, first floor apartment in Bristol in England, I had a 10 meter, 11 meter dipole shortened and I was working all over Bristol with it. So one of those things, I'll never know the answer. But uh, I'm a lot older and hopefully a lot more wiser nowadays. So saying that, I'm still doing this by trial and error. So maybe I've <laughs> maybe I've not learned anything at all. Uh, but I, I see people online saying they'd rather buy an antenna because it's too much hassle and too complicated and too much experience needed to make one. The whole point of doing this is I'm not measuring anything. I'm not calculating anything. I'm just throwing it up and tuning it by hand. So... Yeah, hopefully useful. Back to the antenna. So, okay, don't laugh. This is suspended indoors, non-ideal height and with other metal objects around. But I just thought, as I mentioned my CB days, I wound what I thought was a reasonable amount of inductance. That's 30 turns on the former. And then the rest of the wire, oh, I was tangled up there, is just hanging. Now bear in mind that this was my 20 meter, sorry, yeah, 20 meter, 14 megahertz dipole. And looking at the analyzer, it's resonant. The SWR, the dip in, yeah, it's 13.8, which makes me wonder if all those years ago, if my just winding a half wave dipole on, on a form of, of a length that I, I wanted was actually not so far off. <clears throat> I mean, I've I've not heard of this approximation before, but maybe, maybe as a rule, it's not that far off. But I really want to shorten this, so I'm <laughs> I'm in two minds now. What to do? Do I cut off the wire? 
Uh, or do I wind more turns? I'm I'm not 100% sure, but I'm still trying to do this quickly. So I guess I'll wind some more turns and, and see what happens. But it's interesting that my experience from 20 years ago is still kind of borne out in, in a test now. Okay, I'm really confused. I've tried a few adjustments and it's constantly, no matter how much inductance I add or how much tail end of wire I have, it's always resonant right where it should be on the 17 meter band. <laughs> so I'm now wondering, are these really my, my 20 meter elements or have I accidentally mixed up some 17 meter elements? But it also raises the question, if they are 17 meter elements, then were my experiments back in my CB days of just winding a half wave dipole on whatever former I had actually accurate? Because if that is a 17 meter wire element, yes, I should have measured this, I know, but I just assumed because I remembered putting the wires in that drawer at the end of last summer but it may be that I had multiple sets. So this is raising more questions than it's answering currently. But I really need to get this up in the air because I've tried everything I can in here. And no matter what I do, I've originally there were 30 windings. I then added another 10 and then another 10. And I've adjusted the length of the end part of the element. I've done the same both sides. And no matter what I do, it remains resonant at the same frequency. So I either add turns and reduce the length or extend the length and reduce the number of turns. 18.1. Very strange. I think I'm going to try and put this up in the air and, and see what it actually measures in real life. So the more I think about this, the more I remember having 17 meter elements. <laughs> so... Maybe this is an interesting experiment anyway. The ballon is now attached. I have it suspended just on the, the wooden beams there. Uh, the antenna needs a bit more work. It needs some cable ties. It needs tidying up a bit and just making it a, a bit more secure for the winter. But essentially, I think we're ready to test. And this does make me wonder, firstly, if it is 17 meter elements, which I now think it is. And secondly, if my experiences 20 years ago really have any basis in science or whether it's just incredibly lossy, but I don't think so. <coughs> but I don't think so. Or whether it's just luck. Maybe I've had luck twice in a row, 20 years apart. <laughs> Let's find out. So I ran out of time last night. It got, got too dark to, to do any work out there. But the, the thing I did realise, it was resonant too high in frequency. So I needed to add, well, I guess either more inductance or I needed to add more wire to it. But because of the amount of physical antenna that was already taken up with an inductor, I thought it would probably be more efficient to add a little bit more wire. So... The thing I realised, you don't have to add very much to make a huge difference in in terms of frequency. So uh, when I first put it up, it was resonant, I think, just above the 17 meter band. I think it was around 20 megahertz. And then I added a length of wire that was probably only 60 centimetres or so longer. Uh, and it dropped to about 10 megahertz. So I... There's a bit of fine tuning to do this morning to try and get it around 14. I still don't know if the wire was originally a, a, a 20 meter element or a 17 meter element or elements, plural. Uh, but I guess the thing I've discovered from just playing around with this and not calculating anything is that it doesn't actually matter too much 
once you have a, a stack of inductance in the center, uh, you can you can easily cover 10 megahertz by adding or subtracting what is effectively a small amount of wire. So I'll be back out there in a minute just to, to fine tune it. I'll, I'll check the, the analyzer upstairs, actually. I, I did resort to the analyzer. Uh, just to see what was going on, because the, the SWR on the radio was sky high on, on both bands that I wanted. And uh, the analyzer was a quick way to, to work out where, where it was resonant and whether I needed to lengthen or shorten it. So, back to work in a minute. So, we can see here, this is before I'm making any, any further adjustments, uh, the dip in the yellow is around 12.9 megahertz so I just need to shorten this just a touch to get it up to about 14.1 at least that's the plan so back out to the garden I've now been up and down the stairs to the back garden five or six times I guess this is this is the downside to antenna design by trial and error or no antenna design really, uh, but the analyzer is now showing. By pure luck, the last time I adjusted it, it's showing a dip right at 14.2, which is good enough. It's quite a narrow bandwidth, as you can see, uh, but this shouldn't be a problem for me, especially as I tend to run pack it on 20 meters as long as the SWR is okay around 14.1 or so I shouldn't have too much trouble and the the ATU in the 7300 should just knock the edges off if, if needed so I'm going to switch over to the radio now and hopefully this result will be reflected on the the radio's SWR meter I should have zoomed in on the, the Nano VNA because the bandwidth looked quite narrow, but I, I mean, I was looking in a scale of like 10 to 20 megahertz, so maybe, maybe it's not that narrow. If I go down the bottom of the 20 meter band, just with a 10 watt carrier, you can see the SWR is, is low. If I go higher in the band, it's non-existent. So really, I've... I was expecting a narrower bandwidth given the amount of uh, inductance on that antenna. But the ultimate test now will be signal reports both on receive and transmit. So I'll try and find a, a strong station on 20 meters and then do some comparisons between my uh, full full size dipole, although it's a trap dipole, at a, a reasonable height compared to my shortened compromise dipole at a lower height. Interesting results. I'm using, there's not much CW on the band, so I'm using uh, the FT8 signal as a comparison. Uh, you see on the main antenna, no, if I switch to the main antenna, just over S9, switch to the secondary antenna, about S7, and I've, I've tried this across the band, there's about two or three S points difference between the two antennas. And I remember the when I had the full size dipole, out the back at a similar height. It, it wasn't too different to this. Uh, I have found a couple of signals on the band which are stronger on the shortened antenna, but then it's also running at a 90 degree angle compared to the, the main antenna, so it could just be the the angle and the the gain and the nulls in the, the dipole. So this is acceptable. I need to do some more tests and find some other signals later today when the band picks up and do some TX tests as well and check that it's... Well, I mean, it should... If it's three S points down on receive, it's going to be about three S points down on transmit as well. Uh, but it will function as a, a secondary antenna for when I get high levels of noise on the, the primary. 
So, yeah, this just goes to show I'll turn this down. Oops, not used to this radio. It just goes to show, really, that you can just throw something up, uh, make an inductor, and then adjust the legs. It's, it's not really too much hassle. And if you're using the same wire for the inductor as you are the antenna, then the taking a half-wave dipole and basically winding it onto a former with an inductor whatever size you want seems to be a, a good finger-in-the-air rough measurement for the length. You may need to add you know, 30 centimetres or subtract 30 centimetres from the actual rate, the, the end sections. Uh, but as a ballpark figure, it seems to be quite reasonable. And I've, I've not seen this mentioned online before. But I, I think it is also, if you add a, a stack of inductance, then you can tune it over quite a wide range by varying that end point. So it's an interesting exercise. I would normally calculate this. And... It's, yeah, it's been interesting just to, to do something randomly and tune it by by hand with a few trips up and down stairs. It's, it's probably been a little bit more work than if I calculated it because I would have got it fairly accurate in the first place uh, rather than the... I, I don't know how many times I've run up and down the stairs trying to fine-tune things. It must be 20, 20 or so times. So it's less hassle to calculate things properly. But if, if you don't have the patience or... <laughs> If you want the physical exercise, then it's still easy enough to, to form an inductor and, and adjust things after, after the fact. So I've realised that I found some SSB. Switch to the secondary antenna. On this station, there's quite a significant drop in signal. But there's also a significant increase in noise. I don't remember the noise level increasing that much when I had the the full size dipole. But you can see there's a number of stations here that when I switch they completely vanish down into the noise. I'm getting about S3 noise which completely obliterates any weaker signals. I can't think why a shortened dipole would increase the noise floor that much. I mean it used to increase anyway because it's closer to the house, but in this case, the um, in this case the the ends of the dipole are further away from the house, so the noise level should be lower. Uh, but I, I guess this is just something I'll have to live with if I keep this antenna. I may try and increase the height or, or move the position. I need to get some longer coax and try moving it further away or increasing the height. But for what it is, I think it's working quite well. But the, the increase in noise, you can see on the main dipole here with the, um, the RF gain on max, the noise floor on 20 meters, it's about S1 or, or below, depends on the condition of the band. But this is, this is what I'm used to on, on 20 meters. Yeah, so it's just registering on the S meter. That's how it should be. But with the, the other antenna, about S3 noise floor, which is just atrocious, really. So yeah, I need to look into that. But the antenna itself is, is working. I think that was a, a useful exercise. I kind of enjoyed it. I, I hope you did too. I just wanted to apologise for the, the state of this room and the cat poop that was in, in the frame at, at one take. Uh, having just taken on a, a rescue cat, uh, this room is currently also the, the kitty quarantine room. So yeah, sorry for that. Not the, the best thing to have on a, on a video. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is I've I've not been releasing too much content over the summer. Uh, I've had other interests that have been taking up most of my time, mostly music. Uh, also, I ran out of content. Uh, I, I don't want to be another channel that just covers the same thing as everyone else uh, in the pursuit of viewers and subscribers. Although, of course, please subscribe. Um, but yeah, I'd rather have... Uh, 
quality rather than quantity is the expression. Well, th th not that I'm criticizing other viewers, other channels, uh, but I've, I don't want to be doing just the same thing. So yeah, that's it for now. Leave a comment. If you have anything interesting that you'd like me to cover, give me some fresh ideas. Uh, do leave a, a comment. Otherwise, I'll, I'll see you next time. This is Steve, OH3SPN from here in Finland. Goodbye.